Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we're discussing what is going on with pro cyclists gearing. Why are they always massive now? Hello to everyone. It's me again of Walser Studios and performance coach for CRZ. Today, I want to share with you about my exciting experience in defying industry ridicule and the pursuit for genuine cycling innovation for the past decade. And we're currently hosting coffee talks here in Singapore. And yesterday, our topic was about chainring setups and what is the most optimum build that is specific to our riding style. The topic is connected to how we build our custom titanium bikes. Ever heard of the principles of large gearing and cycling, like using massive chain rings that are not available on your local bike shops? As a seasoned veteran in the industry, I have often encountered ridicule and mockery when initially showcasing the advantages of this approach in my online content. Years of experience as both a metallurgist and a mechanical engineer have led me to understand the immense benefits it offers, particularly for individuals with heart problems or those who may not be able to cover as many miles as professional riders. It is encouraging to witness a recent shift in the industry with major brands like Shimano embracing the science behind large gearing. Additionally, the use of single chain rings by pro tour level teams, as showcased by SRAM this year, is further evidence of the effectiveness of these designs on the road. It is essential to remember that true advancements and innovations in cycling are proven not in chat rooms or through idle debate, but rather through real world testing and the experiences of cyclists like yourself. By sharing this knowledge, my intention is to educate and inspire others to explore new possibilities that can enhance their cycling experience. Your support and interest have confirmed the value of continuing on this path, despite the initial skepticism. Thank you again for your kind words and the opportunity to connect with individuals who share our passion for pushing boundaries in the cycling industry. In the world of cycling where trends dominate and major brands shape the narrative, there exists a lesser known path, one taken by those who dare to challenge the status quo. This path is reserved for the mavericks, the innovators, and the individuals like us, driven by a deep understanding of biomechanics, engineering, and performance management. As a veteran of the cycling industry with expertise in metallurgy, mechanical engineering, and biomechanics, I have witnessed firsthand the power of concept to reality. It is in the pursuit of bridging the gap between mass-produced consumer equipment and the advantages of custom bicycle design that we have faced ridicule and mockery from our peers and social media geniuses. But here's the thing, groundbreaking ideas are seldom embraced immediately. The psychology behind the mob mentality that tends to mock ideas not popularized by major brands stems from the inherent drive for sales in these industries. The pursuit of profit often overshadows genuine innovation, leaving little room for unconventional approaches. Nevertheless, I firmly believe that the true essence of cycling lies in the art of transformation and the pursuit of continuous improvement. This is why pro-level cycling teams keep their research and development behind closed doors. They understand that the road to success is paved with a willingness to explore uncharted territories, to push boundaries, and to tread on untraveled paths. At CRZ and Walser Design Studios, we aim to bring this spirit of bespoke holistic cycling designs and rider transformation to Singapore. We believe that by combining our expertise in biomechanics, ergonomics, and performance management with innovative physical training and conditioning, we can offer cyclists a platform that transcends the limitations imposed by mass production. So let us embrace the mocking laughter and the raised eyebrows, for they are the inevitable byproducts of standing apart from the crowd. Instead, let us focus on the possibilities that lie within the world of bespoke cycling. Let us pioneer new concepts, challenge established norms, and open doors to a realm of personalized performance and transformation. Together, let us redefine what it means to ride a bike to go beyond the superficial, and to create a community that values genuine innovation and the relentless pursuit of improvement. In the end, it is not the approval of the masses or the recognition from major brands that defines our success. It is the impact we have on the lives of fellow cyclists, the transformative experiences we provide, and the unrivaled joy that comes from riding a bicycle perfectly tailored to your needs, and become part of our community committed to embracing the Maverick mindset and revolutionizing the world of cycling. Let's pave the way for a future where innovation knows no bounds and the pursuit of excellence is fueled by our passion for genuine cycling transformation.
So what is going on with the chain rings that the pros are using? They all seem to be massive now. Yeah, so this is something that I saw in the Tour Down Under at the start of this year. Something that we've observed in previous years when we've gone to bike racing. It just generally seems to be evolving a little bit over time with pro races. Yeah. The, the thing to point out here is this isn't just time trial chain rings we're talking about. Because they big time trial dinner plates, you know, 60 tooth chain rings used by the likes of Filippo Ganna. They've been around for quite a long time now, and we sort of understand that there's the whole thing about optimizing your chain line and, and all that sort of stuff. But we're noticing now in just all races, even races that are hilly and going up hills, they're using much bigger rings. So pro gears seem to have got much larger, but conversely, amateur gears seem to have got a little bit smaller. So how come we've ended up in this situation? So typically, in the past, you know, pros ran 53, 39 chain rings, and that's why they were called standard gearing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that was what they did. And then bike brands created uh, 5034, the compact chain set, which was designed to be easier gears for amateurs. The everyday rider. Yes. Um, however, now that, like, well, all the brands have switched to 12 speed, you look at, say, Shimano. Yeah. That 5339 isn't really available in 12 I don't, well, I don't now. think I can't it see even it exists. Sales. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it exists. Um, what you do see, though, is they're selling a 5440. Yeah. And that's become a much more popular chain set for professional riders. Yeah, I think that's the route that Shimano have gone down, right? So they've offered that smaller chain size for what's deemed to be amateur riders. And other brands have followed suit. Remember a few years back, SRAM decided that they wanted to shrink everything down, smaller chain rings, smaller cassettes. And then more recently, Campag seemed to have followed suit with that. But if we go back a few years... You can go back to nearly 2016 when we saw pros experimenting with larger chambering sizes. We had yeah. Garen Thomas, didn't we? 2016 2016 Paris Nice. Paris -Nice. Um, yeah, the descent was coming out the back of Es Village down into Nice, and he thought he might get attacked and dropped by Contador on the climb. He did. And so he, he thought, oh, I'm going to put on a massive chain ring so that I can pedal on the descent and, and pursuit back on, um, which he did. But it was only a 54. But I remember at the time putting a 54 on on what was a pretty yeah. early stage was was newsworthy. But now, a lot of them are running that standard, if not bigger. Yeah, I think we're seeing, like we've got here, Mads Pedersen appears to have like a 56 on his road 43 bike. 43 as a standard on his road bike. Yeah, and that's running SRAM. Yeah. Um, and I spoke to uh, Connor Swift yeah. from Ineos, and, and you know he was saying that he often has just the, the 54 on, but for like that would be his standard. So if he was going into the mountains, he'd run the 54. But, but, run, <laughs> yeah. but, then, um, but then on flat days or yeah. a sprint day or classics, 55, 56. Because the sort of argument is that, well, and the, just purely by the way the gears work, if you have a massive chaining at the front, that the inner chaining still has to be considerably larger because you can't have that huge jump between them. Yeah. But the question is... Like, you know, okay, we've observed this, and this isn't just those guys. Then We haven't picked isolated examples. <laughs> no. These bigger chain rings are now endemic throughout um, the pro peloton. But the question is why? Okay. Like, why are we seeing much bigger chain rings now? Well, I mean, common sense says it's purely down to the speeds of bike races, right? So we've said this before. Over recent years, bike racing is just getting faster and faster and faster. So with that concept in mind if the racing is getting faster you're going to need gears that are going to enable you to ride faster surely yeah i think like if you look at the tour de france is like is a good yardstick isn't it the average speed of the last two tours de france was um like got 43 kph average in 2022 Correct. and like 41 or 42 kph average in like last year 2023 39 kilometers an hour in 2010 We've seen an upward trend here. Yeah, so yeah, 39 in, in 2010. And there are things that affect it because the, the amount of climbing in the race differs a lot and, and all the rest of it. But you do, if you plot everything, you see a general trend. You know, in the 80s, it was like 38 kph average and, and, and yeah. so on. So it, what you're seeing there is, is technology making the racing faster. The man of the day, our champion... Mr. Drew Jazz, you Mike, here? Mike, Mike. Yes, and up on stage we have our champion for the 66k, the overall. 
of the Lord of Udadani by Tudor Bums, Nian Amish Cruz and Kunasada Maswanha. Nian Amish Cruz from the Yes, and put it on! Our official yellow jersey from Two the Bones! Yay! Perfect! Good, uh, Group, they they all finish all together. So, women in sports. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Nice workout, man. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. How many did we do? We are at 44. 44. Okay. Perfect. That was great. Nice. Nice workout. Okay, coffee time. Coffee Just time. like. Um, but the other thing we need to mention is that while the pro gears have got bigger, the gears that are often sold to the public have got smaller. So, you know, you look at um, like the, well, SRAM and Campagnolo offering, yeah. say, 48 tooth chain rings instead of the, the 52. Yeah, I think it's a case that it is an improvement for the consumer, I'm going to say. So bikes that are generally sold to the public now, I feel, are supplied with far more appropriate gearing for the type of rider that is going to be buying it. You know, we've talked about 5339 however many years ago. The majority of people, let's face it, that probably wasn't the optimal cassette and chainring size for them. Yeah, I think that's true. I think the chainrings are good for, um, like, you know, mortal riders. Yeah. But what I would like to see is the likes of SRAM and Shimano supplying the bigger cassette option. So it seems that when you buy, like, a SRAM a 12-speed yeah. group set. The standard cassette that comes with a bike is the 1030. 